I'm, I'm Adrian Chapman. I'm presenting this on behalf of Laura Carmichael, who did the bulk of this work but could not join us today. Uh, so we are switching tracks from the previous talks within this session and looking around uh, how to understand the privacy risk in managing healthcare data, particularly for uh, use within AI or um, any other analysis. Uh, we're going to start with, uh, we want to ensure high standards of data stewardship and governance of AI in healthcare is vital. So any AI-based technologies need to be safe, secure, rights-respecting, beneficial, and endorsed by the communities they intend to serve. At the moment, most of our AI, uh, most of the analysis that we do and the AI that we apply to our health data is on very specific data that is owned and released for a single and particular purpose, right? Uh, that you have ethics to use this data for a very particular analysis. And the goal over time is to understand or to uh, broaden the scope of the data used for, uh, or data available for use, um, particularly by integrating records uh, so that you're not looking at a particular disease, but you're looking across a spread or a range of patient information. The hope is that through the increased use of trustworthy AI, there'll be greater enhancements of public health and personalized care. Uh, for ex instance, how AI-based technologies may help clinicians to diagnose patients more quickly or predict progression of disease. To do this, whoops, sorry, that did not mean to flip that yet. Uh, to do this, data is needed, such as uh, to train the machine learning models, uh, and what's required is representative population data from multiple sources, including data from our health and social care records, as well as the data we may be we may individually generate from our wearables and monitoring devices. So this is a um, an extension from where we are now. Um, instead of looking at specific records about a specific disease and a specific technology uh, or specific uh, readings, we're trying to combine in larger amounts of data. We know the growing application of AI in health and social care presents risks to individuals, communities, and groups of people and the wider society, um, particularly within exposing uh, um, personal information. So against this backdrop, a key issue is how can we support organizations making decisions about sharing or providing access to sensitive data for AI-enabled health and social care services? In particular, how can, privacy, how can we privacy risk assessment, how can we provide privacy risk assessment methods and tools that could be used to support organizations in making these decisions consistently and transparently. So um, what we are uh, describing here today is a tool called Spider Risk. So Spider Risk is an automated risk assessment tool that is based on uh, systematic cause and effect modeling of threats. Uh, so we're going to show how threat modeling can be used to support multiple stakeholders to better understand privacy risk factors and make consistent and transparent data sharing, access, and linkage decisions. Remember, going back, our goal is to provide linkage across many types of information, and there are many stakeholders within the system. It is not just the technologist taking the data and analyzing it, the individual the patients need um, to be represented, as do the clinicians, as do the hospital data controllers and infrastructure, right? So there's, there's a lot of different stakeholders in here and different regulations apply to each of these stakeholders differently. Whoops, sorry. Uh, right, by the end, we're going to talk about how our approach will be uh, extended past organizations um, to other stakeholders. quick overview of what we're going to do. Uh, so we have this automated risk assessment tool called Spider Risk, uh, which provides a systematic cause and effect modeling of threats. Um, what it starts with is a machine readable knowledge base, or it contains a machine readable knowledge base that describes classes of system assets and their possible relationships together with the associated threats, causes, and effects. So uh, this includes threat coverage for things like insider attacks or malicious attacks or non-malicious threats. A risk, whoa, sorry, there's something uh, automated on the flip in here. Uh, a risk analyst can model a target system in terms of related assets. 
The knowledge base is then used to create and identify which threats are relevant and create a cause and effect simulation of those threats. After the software has found the threats and computed the risk levels, the end user is then able to kind of explore the threat graph um, in order to understand how they can control their options. What this means is that uh, for any given set of data sources and the types of threats that a particular um, set of stakeholders is concerned about, you can model the set of threats and identify whether the A they will occur or um, what the actual likelihood is and the possible set of mitigations. So this is actually just an example um, from Spider Risk itself. Uh, as you can see, there's a model summary panel on the left here. Um, allows the user to examine various aspects, such as the controls, the adverse effects, and their impacts. Um, whoop. I'm really sorry, there seems to be some automated flow going on here, uh, such as controls, adverse effects, and their impacts and threats. So what can happen here is you can take adverse event impacts related to electronic health records um, and see how they include a loss of confidenti confidentiality, availability, and integrity, right? So we kind of classify them into, into different impact types. What we're going to do here is, uh, so this is just a, a continuation of an example um, from where a system is modeled, uh, was created on real-time world, sorry, a real-world use case uh, for a um, discharge project scenario. So it basically was doing a cross-domain linkage of health and social care data. Uh, uh, the project was uh, trying to use advanced analytics uh, to model patient discharge risks and expected departure points from the hospital. So basically understanding that, you know, when somebody is going to leave a hospital so that they can schedule and optimize uh, provision for community care. And now obviously this means that you have records in multiple places, both across the hospital, but also then within the community outside of the hospital's data domain or data controller's domain. Um, so it requires individual linking of co this complex uh, multi-stakeholder data um, that's held by hospital and the council um, for services. So from this, you can see that the system model um, shows that the two data sets are hosted on um, different servers within the a data center. Uh, one data set is de-identified health data by the hospital. Um, and leads towards onward care. And the other data set is de-identified de social care held by the council. Um, within spider risk, you can then say, you can then understand um, to find the patterns of assets and the relationships. And the risk level for the system model can be calculated automatically. So using the spider risk threat explorer, you can examine which threats were identified and what the root causes for those threats are. Um, it also recommends forward the control strategies. Um, so you can basically then identify which pieces you want to control and then rerun it to uh, see what the update is for your threat likelihood given the new controls. So, um, what I have described thus far is, is what exists within spider risk itself. And what I'd like to do now is go forward with a little thought exercise around um, what, how this should and could be extended going forward. Um, so as part, of, sorry, um, Basically, what we want to do is we want to continue to, continue to build uh, community expertise in the use of spider risk. So applying this to other domains and understanding when and where uh, the modeling or the threats, uh, the threat assessments are lacking. Um, but we also need to understand when uh, we can use this for personal data processing um, in order to support not just... Um, the controllers, the data controllers who are doing data protection by design, uh, particularly as a part of GDPR, uh, but also uh, how we can support individuals. So we're going to uh, describe a um, an individual project, which actually is related to a, a talk given previously in this se seminar. 
So let's assume that we have a particular scenario where there is a pretrial study um, and we have a medical researcher who wants to understand or wants to reach out and understand um, how hospital or information contained in the hospital can be linked and integrated for their purposes with individuals information that's held in personal online data stores. So how can, <clears throat> how can those, how can people who are generating their own personal data, how can we help them make decisions about who to share that data with and what their personal risk is? Sorry. Um, in this case, we need to extend um, uh, the, the project in order to fully support um, this new stakeholder. So we do not have the individual risks for this, um, for a pods, but um, the system itself can understand the set of threats and can understand the addition of a new stakeholder. The thing that is missing in this case is understanding and allowing the user to identify the set of protections or the set of risks that they are willing to take, right? So it is unfathomable for us to say as a personal online data store user that we should set our um, protections individually at a fine grain level. Instead, we'd want to inherit a set of uh, policies that applies to our individual beliefs um, or our protection uh, requirements, our individual protection requirements. And so the next phase is to identify a set of standard packages that can then be applied within Synthema. Thank you for taking the time to listen. And uh, I'm happy to answer any questions.